Good morning, folks. Big science news today here. We've got a lot on space weather, some of which relates to the galactic current sheet as well, and we've got updates on Earth's rotation glitches. Let's begin with those sunspots we saw exploding into life over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was a bit calmer, except for the sunspot growth. Solar flaring is holding mostly at a B-class production, and the plasma filament activity was mostly destabilizing and collapsing rather than ejecting and CME producing. We took another geomagnetic storm overnight. The solar wind perturbations are very small, but it's been one after another without as much as a full day for field recovery. Luckily, they have indeed been small thus far. Looking quickly at those sunspots a bit more zoomed in, I'm anxious to see if NOAA classifies this as one or two active regions, but nevertheless, folks, we still have about a 4 to 5x increase in solar activity to come as we hit sunspot maximum over the next four years, and this development in magnetic complexity is indicative of our being on our way up in the cycle. We'll have a lot to get to in just a moment, but real quick first, took another blood echo in Tonga, slightly closer to the surface with this one than the last one, top quake of the day. Let's begin the science news with some of the world's best in the top solar physics journal using the data included in this early portion of the sunspot cycle to confirm two things. First, we are heading up to sunspot maximum peak around 2025, and it should be about as powerful as cycle 24, which makes us look ahead to cycle 26 and solidify the prediction that the sun could enter grand minimum at that time critical thing to understand. Grand solar minimum is not here now. Sunspot maximum is on deck next, but looking ahead to the next sunspot cycle, that's the key for GSM. Up next is a space weather newsletter. A lot of good ones to read in here, including a look at how low latitude electrical grids are just as vulnerable to solar storms as their high latitude counterparts. And one from two familiar authors who are helping to notice and break down what more can be gleaned from expanded spectral consideration of the sun. It's not quite as good as including particle forcing, but it is much better than the old view of the sun which showed virtually nothing. When they eventually get around to the particle forcing, it will all be about the global electric circuit and its ability to translate space weather impacts to the ionosphere into near instantaneous forcing of the troposphere. Their dissection of the pattern in cahoots with El Nino and La Nina is examined here, finding a generally opposite modulation of the circuit flow on land versus ocean during the different phases of the ENSO cycle. By the way, this week we heard pretty much those exact words on the forcing power of the global electric circuit at the EGU meeting. We've seen it get a place in the AGU meetings across the pond here, but its sister really needs to join the party. Combining the circuit, the grid risk, and overall space weather science, every major event, whether studied for Poland here or otherwise around the globe, takes on the southward pointing BZ component of the solar wind. This is wholly controlled by its magnetic angle, the phi, the interplanetary magnetic field of the heliospheric current sheet. It's not just the induction risk to the grids, but the global electric circuit is jacked by these ionospheric excitements as well, dependent on the interplanetary field direction within the current sheet. And let's go one step scarier to the storms that can really rock our planet. Those, once again, most dependent on the space magnetic fields within the current sheet. Anyone want to guess what the galactic version of the sheet and fields does to the sun? Moving on to Earth's rotation glitches, the numbers keep creeping upwards in terms of speed, reducing the length and expected lengths of days and excess leftover time at the end of the year. By the way, they expect yesterday was the longest day we'll get in 2021, and for those who have watched Earth speeding up, shortening the days, and our coverage, we can confirm that the Earth should be doing nothing but slowing down. While that may have been the case for eons, it's certainly not the case anymore. Earth is speeding up. I just hope we didn't all forget the Earth Rotation Modulation by Magnetic Field Anomalies papers we asked you to review this week. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.